Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. On a good night, listener discretion is advised. What did that guy say? I don't know, that music was ripping though. The phone number for Loveline is 1-800-LOVE-191. That's 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. And now, here's Loveline with your host, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, all righty, Loveline. Quick correction, it is Adam Carolla, but it's not Dr. Drew, it's Dr. Marcel. Dr. Marcel's filling in for Dr. Drew tonight. Dr. Drew is on a skiing vacation and will be Ever gone. Ever since I stopped taking Depo-Provera, oh, I've been lactating. Okay, well, he must, be, uh, he must have called the hotline to tell us that earlier. Uh, he is filling in for uh, our good friend, Dr. Drew, who will be gone the better part of this week. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. What we're going to do tonight, Dr. Marcel's a doctor. It's, um, he, you, can, you can deal with most of the crap that Drew can deal with, right? Oh, yeah. But your specialty is cosmetic surgery. Plastic and reconstructive. Right. You don't like cosmetic? It kind of just narrows the field. Uh-huh. So, meaning when people say cosmetic surgery, they think of uh, one of the Gabor sisters getting some work done on it. Right, Pamela Lee. Right. But you do more than that. Yeah. You've gone into villages in Nicaragua and uh, repaired um, orphan kids who've stepped on landmines and stuff like that? Uh, not, quite, not quite that dramatic. No. But, no. Uh, no, most plastic surgeons across the country do a lot of uh, reconstructive work as well as the cosmetic. But we get most of the... the fame for the cosmetic end of it. What percentage of your work would you say is reconstructive as opposed to uh, just um, cosmetic? About 40 percent. And um, like burns and accidents, burns, stuff like that? Accidents, uh, breast cancer reconstruction, uh, the usual Saturday night drunk right. type thing, car accident. All right, so tonight what we're going to do is, um, I mean, you can handle most of the medical questions, but let's see if we can skew it a little toward some of the more cosmetic ones. Sure. Or I know you don't like the word cosmetic. Cosmetic or reconstructive. Right. All right? All right. And I, I would like to say that Dr. Marcel is my favorite of uh, all Drew's doctor buddies because he's, um, Drew's doctor buddies are sort of like Drew, which is not a lot of fun to hang out with. But uh, not Marcel. He, uh, the cosmetic surgeons are the pimps of the doctor world, and we appreciate that. All right. So you ready, Doc? You got it. Brian. Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. What's going on? Um, well, I have a kind of a question about multiple people that to sleep in, like multiple lovers type of thing. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of people that are interested and, you know, I'm kind of interested in all of them equally. Yeah. I was wondering if, you know, I haven't really told either of them about anyone else. Uh, what are you doing, Brian? Are you sleeping with someone? Um, two of them. You're sleeping with two of them. Yeah. And what's your question? Um, kind of like advice on what I should do with it, because I don't really know if I should tell them about each other. Yeah. Or because none of them has really asked. I don't think they know much about it. But uh huh. Are Just that don't ask, don't tell. Right, Brian. Yeah. You you using protection? Um. Yeah. Yeah. You wearing condoms? Yeah. Yeah, because the fastest way someone could tell is if you picked up something and transferred it to, you know, from uh, point A, you being point B, and uh, someone else's crotch being point C, they could figure it out at that point. But you're wearing a condom. Yes. You like these girls? Um, yeah, for the most part I do. All right. So what do you want to know? Whether you should tell them? Well, that, that and whether or not I should kind of drop them or anything else, I don't know if. I should because it's... Well, listen, why don't you pick the one you like and um, just hump her exclusively? <laughs> can you do that? I think I can handle that. You can't? Yeah. You can or you can't? I think I can. All right. Figure out which one you like the most. Hump her exclusively. All right, Brian? All right. Yeah. Oh, boy, he's the uh, life of the party, this Brian. <laughs> Crystal. Um, hi. You're 14. What's going on? My best friend... She's like a major slut. She runs away from home constantly. She lives with guys in their apartments and stuff. And she like has a different guy almost every week. Yeah. I don't know what to do to help her, to see what she's doing wrong. How old is she? She's 14. Mm-hmm. 
Was she a pretty bad family? Um, not per se. I guess her family is like, I go over to their house all the time. They're really sweet people. Yeah. I guess. Good people, bad parents. That's the story of my childhood, by the way, Dr. Marcel. Where are your parents? Are they uh, together? No, my, my dad passed, but my mom's in Southern California. Were they good to you growing oh, up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where'd you meet Drew? Back in college? Medical school. Oh, boy. No good stories to tell about him? Plenty. Oh, okay. We'll get into that in the second hour then. Uh, Crystal. Yeah? Is she sleeping at these guys' houses? Um, yes. She's... She is? She's living at these guys' houses for, like, I don't know. She stays there for a couple of weeks, I guess. Yeah. And she comes home sometimes every so often. But she has good parents. I... pretty much. They must miss her horribly. They do. Her mother, oh gosh, she has so many problems with her. She sits there and she comes, when my friend comes over, her mom will call and say, Danny's coming over. If she doesn't show up in 15 minutes, then. Uh, you know, what do you do? I, I'm going to, if I have a teenager like this, I'm just going to chain them to the radiator. Even if I don't even have a radiator in my house, I'm actually going to have one installed. You know, in the Jewish religion, at age 13, the boy becomes a man. Right. Uh, I'm not Jewish, but when my kid turns 13, I will install a radiator in my house. That will be uh, my bar mitzvah for my children. And then chain them to it. Yeah. Well, I'll wait for them to F up. Oh, but uh, you know they're going to. They'll be chained to it almost immediately. Crystal? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know there's a whole lot you can do other than try to make her aware of uh, what she's doing. I think she's pretty much aware of what she's doing. Why do you think, think she's really doing it? Well, I mean, make her aware of the dangers of what she's doing. Yeah. Well, she's going to get pregnant or get some kind of venereal disease or get into some kind of trouble, right? Yeah. And you're her best friend? Yep. Well, why don't you intervene? Why don't you speak to her friend to friend? Okay. You think you could do that? Yeah, but uh, I don't know if she'll listen to me. She... All right. Well, look, what, the, what, what do you want us to tell you? Oh, I just... I just kind of wanted some advice, Well, you know, whether I should just stay away from her, keep my distance. Well, if she's your friend, talk to her. I think you try to talk to her, but uh, eventually, if someone is doing something that's horribly disagreeable to you, even if they're your best friend, you've got to cut them loose. You have to distance yourself after you've, you've made a good effort, I think. Yeah, but, I mean, if they're trying, if they're engaging in stuff that's really dangerous, maybe you should call. Uh, I mean, but her folks are aware of it, uh, at least uh, so says Crystal, so... It seems like it's more their job. Crystal, you just make her aware of how you feel about what she's doing and uh, see if you can con convince her to come to the light. But uh, if she's not going to, she's not going to. Speaking of coming to the light, you watched 60 Minutes tonight, Marcel? Oh, yeah. Taped it. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Did you see uh, the uh, religious zealot family? Uh, yeah, I did. As a doctor, you must have been uh, somewhat outraged. Well, well, not really as a cosmetic surgeon, because <laughs> <laughs> there's no business for no. you with these people. You're right there. They're bad for the economy. The, the deal on, <laughs> no kidding, uh, they did this profile on this family that was from some sort of, I don't know if they were a Christian or... A religious scientist type of background where they don't believe in medical treatment of any kind. People who uh, study the Bible, but study it with a jeweler's loop. Right. And they interpret everything in the Bible uh, literally. And this family, for some unknown reason, had 13 kids, all aging, uh, ranging from ages of maybe, um, I don't know, 5 to 16 or something like that. So far, two of them have died because, according to Scripture, it's a sin to have them seek any kind of medical advice or, 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 or uh, medical help. So they've not been immunized or had any checkups or have they no idea what's going on with them. Can't even take aspirin. Right. So they get down and they pray on these problems and meanwhile I think uh, one of the six-year-olds died because they, they had an ear infection right and uh, they refused uh, to take any antibiotics and uh, the kid ended up being um, dehydrated, dehydrated or something. malnourished and he died from uh, dehydration and malnourishment then the other one the older one slipped into a diabetic coma right died from diabetes shot of insulin it's what it would have taken right but uh, anyway, God's will is God's will. But I, at, at a certain point, don't you have to say to yourself, hey, uh, if God keeps killing our kids, um, maybe he's not the um, uh, omnipotent, uh, all-forgiving uh, deity that we'd, we'd hope for.
Meanwhile, there's guys in prisons uh, chowing down, doing push-ups, bulking up, and just waiting, uh, just counting the days to their next rape victim. Exactly. And perfect health. These guys in death row, they lived at uh, 95. Meanwhile, your kids are dropping like flies. There's just no justice there. This is the beauty of religion, though. There's always a reason. Well, God took the 6-year-old and uh, took the uh, 16-year-old. Maybe God is starting a softball team. I mean, it, it, you know, and then so she says uh, they were talking, they were interviewing the uh, woman who looked uh, to me as if possibly someone had done something to her at some point, And uh, that's what caused her uh, radical religious beliefs. But um, he said, listen, um, I don't know who it was. Uh, uh, Ed Bradley said uh, we talked to some doctors and they said uh, it was a 97 97 percent chance that she would have lived. Right. If you would uh, got an insulin shot. And she said, well. That's still a 3% chance that she wouldn't have, and that, to me, is an even playing field. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's, as long as there's a, a remote possibility that, that uh, she God wouldn't have, have lived. Intervened. Now, here's, I give God a chance to intervene for the first kid. And uh, I don't know if God was uh, napping, God had an appointment, God was at the dentist, something. I don't take chances with the second kid. Uh, I, um, it's tragic. It is, and the thing is, is they kept saying, Ask the kids. Right. The kids don't. Well, of course, the kids are brainwashed. Let's face it. Right. I mean, you grow up. Um, you grow up in Africa. You, you throw a spear. You grow up in um, in England. You, you eat um, you eat bad bad boiled meat. You grow up here. You um, you watch sitcoms. You know, you, your kids. Your kids are just whatever environment they're in. No, naturally. Sure. I mean, this is how this is how kids become racist. They have a couple of racist uh, racist mom, racist pop, and then they grow up. Hating uh, people of color doesn't doesn't mean they're bigots when they come out of the womb. Right. All right. Sarah. Yeah. You're 17. Yep. Um, my problem is that me and my best friend are kind of fighting over this guy, and but it's like a mental fight, and um, like she doesn't really know about it, but she knows that I like him, and he knows that I like him, but he's like fooling around with her. Mm hmm. Well, he likes her more. Well, it's not that. It's just I'm backing off, kind of, like... You're letting her win. Yeah. All right. Well, that's very noble of you. <laughs> you think he'd rather be with you than with her? I don't know. It's, like, kind of hard to say. Well, he's kind of with her, though, right? Well, kind of. He's just using her. <laughs> what is he doing with you? What's he going to do with you? He wants to, he's just having sex with her till uh, he can uh, save up enough money to buy a ring for you? I don't know. It's no. It's, like, weird. He's not using her. He's, he's dating her. That is a form of use. I I, uh, I would agree with that, but it, you're not even being utilized at all. Yeah, but like I don't really know how to tell her that I like him, like a lot. Well, I don't think you have to because they're sort of doing stuff together, aren't they? Yeah, but he's just using her. He's how do you know he's using her? Because he told me. Yeah, <laughs> that's that would be my rap too, by the way. Well, he told me that he'd rather be with me, but since like we're best friends, he doesn't want to hurt her. How old is he? He's. 19? He's very noble, this man. He yeah. doesn't want to hurt her, so he'll just use her. I like him a lot. For a while, uh, sexually. Uh, what's, uh, there's no other guys in your town? Well, there's like a million guys. But oh, there is. I want him. You do? Yeah. And who saw him first? Well, actually, it's her uh, older brother's best friend. Mm hmm. Well, she kind of has dibs on him, Sarah. I know, but that isn't fair. Yeah, well, well listen, I, I wanted Adrian Barbeau. Well, don't look at me now. I got Marcel. Life's not fair when it comes to dating. No. But don't worry. You'll meet somebody else. And then he'll have an opportunity to use you. <laughs> don't worry. You'll be used at some point. Okay. I mean, you have to think this is a guy that'll play both ends against the middle. Um, what, do, what makes you think that if he settles for you, that he won't do the same thing to you down the road with somebody else? I don't know. He's like, his younger brother is my best friend, and he said that he'd only do this to people he actually liked. I mean, like, he'd only have sex with people he liked. Oh, yeah. And he's just using her. Well, he's having sex with her, though, right? Yeah. All right. I thought he only had sex with people he liked. Well, he lied. <laughs> and All this right. is a guy you're interested in. Yeah. Sarah, this uh, makes as much sense as the uh, religious family refusing medical help. <laughs> Please, move on. This is a competition between you and your friend. She saw the guy first. She's going out with him. Maybe he's using her. Maybe he's just telling you that. Uh, the world may never know, and we don't have time to ask Mr. Al. Just move on. 
Okay. All right. Well, what good's it going to do? You're going to bang your head up against a wall for six months. You're not going to win this guy away. Move on. Find another guy. This is a bad uh, way to start your dating career, by the way. You should only be interested in guys that are very interested in you. Now, this is a message I'd like to put out to the youth of America, as a matter of fact. Oh, my God, if I had a nickel for every hour I spent pining over someone who wasn't interested in me. Marcel, uh -huh. I, I know uh, with the sports cars, the, uh, the uh, excessive gold jewelry, and the opulent lifestyle you lead, it, it, it couldn't be further away from you now. But I'm sure even you, at some point in life, pined away. Uh, love, unrequited. Many a time. Many a time. And it, it, it just made you miserable. It, did, it certainly didn't solve anything. And, and the person you were pining for was probably pining for someone else. Albeit he was probably on TV or something, but someone else. Usually older guys. Yeah. Just go ahead and be good to yourself, everybody. Go ahead and let the people like you like you, and you can go ahead and like them back. Kurt. Yes. You're 21. I sure am. You're not gay, are you, Kurt? No. No, there's no gay man named Kurt. No. There, my theory's been proved again. <laughs> Got a question about yep. my girlfriend. All right. Uh, she's 19. She um, has slept with other guys before, before mm -hmm. me. Yeah. I don't think during me, but I figure in before. Right. And um, she says that, you know, she never enjoyed it really with them, and she's never felt like she does with me, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And she says that she's had sex, but she has never, you know, popped her cherry. Uh -huh. Like, you know, she's still pretty, you know, tight down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Once they've had sex with three or four guys, well, yeah, it was it's like four, ringing actually. the uh, dinner bell in one of those old Western movies. But she says that... Yeah, they get real sloppy. She said it's not... She said it's still, like, like new. Yeah. No, it's Barrett. Listen, uh, I got a, um, I got a 80... What the hell year is that? I got a BMW at home. Uh -huh. It's a, uh, it's a '89, but it's it's like it's brand new because uh, the guy who owned it before me he didn't really use it that much, you know. He didn't really work it that much. Not like he was up against the tailpipe, you know, working it and and wearing out the uh, ball joints and, and cams and shafts and all sorts of stuff like that. I mean, it's almost new, so I understand the analogy. But I have a, uh, like my question is, I mean, is there like something physically that happens? Like she says that there's something in there that like like breaks or like actually pops. Right. You know, at like one certain time, it just happens. Right. And then from then on, things loosen up down there. Right. Is that true? Marcel, you're the doctor. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that, that was doctor. coming my way. Have you ever uh, done a uh, hymen restoration process? No, no, I haven't. Ever been approached uh, by like some um, rich Saudi Arabs princess. Yeah, no. for that? No? No. They do that, though, don't they? They do. They do. Oh, that is awesome. How do they do that, by the way? Where do they get the skin? Well, you rotate some skin around from locally down there. Oh, you do? You just kind of stretch it over? Uh, to a degree, yeah. Well, like a, a middle-aged newscaster, what he does with his hair. Exactly. You know what's easier? Sort of fold it over. Just get a penis enlargement. Ooh. See? Ann was listening to that one. Yeah. Was. yeah. Oh, play. Ann. And Ann is what? What are you, 30? Man, you must be real sloppy by now down there. <laughs> yeah. No. All those years of work. Oh yeah. What is that supposed to mean? Well, Kurt, according to Kurt's theory, you know, when you have when you get the sex in, you get a little, you know, you get a little stretched out. It's like taffy. Well, shouldn't it shouldn't something have happened if she's had it like four a couple times? Uh-oh. No. The the dog's on hymen alert. Shh. Quiet down. <laughs> All right, shouldn't Kurt is saying shouldn't her hymen have been pierced right. by now? Yes. It should have. She's had penetration. Well, she's well, she's had it more than four times. I'm saying with four other guys, she's had it. So, right. figure multiple times with four guys. I mean, that's right. Pretty good. Yeah, that's uh, plenty of penetration. Does yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Understand a female body at all? I me? Yeah. I haven't had sex with her yet. But do you understand? It doesn't get stretched out like you seem to think. Yeah, it's not like a old para, I mean, it, para it, it, loafers it, 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 or something. It's made for to have babies. I mean, it stretches. I'm uh, I'm saying I'm just telling you what she tells me, okay? Right. She tells me that there's something in there that is supposed to snap or pop, like, or break or whatever. I don't know. I yeah, don't that understand much been, about it. That should have been the first time she had sex. That's what I thought. How how far in is the hymen? It's right at the entrance. Right there. Right there. I mean, you couldn't. You think she's pulling my leg on this? I mean. I don't know. Your your yeah. leg's pretty pullable, Kurt. I gotta tell you, <laughs> you got like a leg that's just hanging out there, begging to be pulled. I mean, 
popping your cherry or, or having your, your hymen broken can uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a big dramatic event that with all a lot of pain, a lot of blood, all that. So she may have lost that long time she ago. She may have lost it water skiing in the uh, you right? know summer yeah, of I 91. Mean, Dr. Drew said before, I mean, you can pop it from using a tampon. Right. You know? Uh, is is um, or act, just doing activities? It let, doesn't... let me ask you this hypothetical, Marcel. Um, would you say the average girl by the age of twenty-one would have lost her hymen even if she wasn't sexually active? That's tough to say. That that not necessarily. You don't want to go out on a hymen limb here. I, I will not go out on the hymen limb. All right, come on. There's the hymen tree. It beckons. You don't want to go on the limb with me. But I mean, horseback riding. I mean, it can't, you know, you've heard all the Bull stories about... and calf roping. Right, riding Stuff a like bike. that. Yeah. yeah. Could, but um, probably not. All right. So, uh, Kurt, you should ask her to um, go see the gyna... Well, just call it the crotch doctor when you talk to her. Yeah, how and old is she? How she's 20. Is she? She's 19. Uh, 19. Has she ever gone to a gynecologist? She can find all this out. Yeah. I mean, the girl needs to, like, get up on her own body here. Right. She sounds like an idiot. Tell her to go to the gynecologist and to bring back literature for Kurt and uh, hard candy. And we'll be back. This is Love Line. Love Line will be right back. <laughs> Hey, it's the Love Line. Adam Carolla. Dr. Drew's not with us. Dr. Drew is skiing as we speak, or probably sleeping as we speak. But Dr. Marcel is filling in for him tonight quite amply, I must say. And um, Dr. Marcel's specialty is reconstructive surgery. Uh, don't limit it just to reconstructive. And uh, cosmetic surgery. I'm so, in pain. My breasts hurt. How many... Uh, <laughs> How many breast jobs would you say you've done over the last, uh, over your career? Oh, a few hundred. A few hundred. And what are you doing more these days? Um, are you uh, doing more breast augmentation or, or are you doing the uh, reduction? More, more augmentation. Yeah, that's good. That's the kind of world. I'll tell you the kind of world I don't want to live in, Marcel, where the uh, reductions start to uh, outweigh the uh, breast enlargements. Stop you know the what I'm madness. Saying? Yeah. That's when uh, we're just going to have to stop the world. I'm just going to get off that. Yeah. Um, what the hell else did I want to ask you about breasts? Are people, what about this whole uh, sham with this, um, this uh, silicone and the uh, saline and all that and women getting their breasts changed out and all that kind of stuff? Has that died down? Yeah. Uh, it all came to kind of a crisis in 1992 when the FDA put a moratorium on uh, gel implants because there had been reports of problems. And in the uh, five years since the moratorium, they've, there's been a lot of studies done by immunologists, rheumatologists, uh, plastic surgeons, and all. And Jugologists. Jugologists. And so far, no study has shown any uh, health risks related to the, the gel filler. Yeah. Um, there's problems with any operation. I know. This is why um, lawyers all need to be uh, just taken out and uh, drowned somewhere in a, uh, in a shallow stream. Because it would make it that much more ironic if they just drowned in about a foot and a half of water. Because uh, the poor uh, Dow Corning is now going under. I don't know. Are they bankrupt? Or what the hell happened with them? Yeah, they're, they fell. And there's around. all these uh, angry lesbian lawyers and uh, the women whose breasts they hate. And they're all uh, marching on Washington. And there's all this hysteria. Meanwhile, they don't have any real conclusive physical medical evidence no. to mean, substantiate these claims, do so, they? Some women have had problems with their implants it's just related to the fact that it is surgery people have to remember it's you know cosmetic surgery is still surgery there are risks you're putting something that was made in uh, battle creek michigan uh three years earlier in your crotch i mean uh, in well, your not... chest <laughs> well i've put it in my crotch well, that but that's too. my business well I, I don't know where dow corning is but the, the point is is something's been shipped packed uh, sent uh, across the country and then you've had it stuffed under your skin there's right. bound to be a small percentage of bodies who reject that. Well, there's just there's a percentage of women that make too much scar tissue around it. They can have problems with that. They can have problems with infection, that sort of thing. But those are known surgical risks. 
what was the big concern was that the gel somehow was causing a lot of other health problems, a lot of uh, autoimmune disease or joint problems, and every study so far has, has failed to show any link. Right. So, so with these class action suits, do they have to give the money back then? Uh, right now, I, the latest is the, they're finally getting to the point where they're going to reach the, the final settlement. Good. And then all the women that uh, join the class action suit, I guess, are, will receive some form of a, some kind of a payout. I hope they get nothing. <laughs> Crazy. <sighs> all right. Anyway, uh, there is a difference, though, by the way. I have felt the silicone as opposed to the saline, and uh, silicone feels a little better. It, it's cosmetically, it's a, it's a nicer result. Yeah, more what God had in mind. Actually, it feels better than a breast. This is really better. If God had more time to put in on the breast, it would have felt that way. Whoever came up with this are Dow Corning, uh, geniuses, these people. Greg. Yeah. You're 13. Yeah, okay. I know this girl, and, um, you know, she's kind of promiscuous. I don't know. And um, she has this boyfriend. Now, she's coming on to me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't want to piss the boyfriend off because he's, you know, kind of my friend. But, um, you know, I really like her. He's kind of your friend or she's kind of your friend? Well, um, he's kind of my friend. And, you know, I like her, too. How old is she? Uh, she's 13, too. So. And what do you mean she's promiscuous at 13? Well, yeah. Just the way she takes her retainer out? <laughs> um, I, she, she's just always around a lot of guys. You know, she makes out, you know, a lot at, like, all, you know, the little, you know, the parties and all that. Yeah. But, that, um, mean, that means she's flirtatious. That doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean she's promiscuous. Whatever. You well, know. it's promiscuous at 13, doing a lot of making out, I guess. So um, it, what's she doing to you? What kind of signs is she laying down to you, Greg? Well, we were at a party the other day, and, um, you know, all of a sudden she starts kissing me on the bed. You know, it, it goes pretty much as far as that, but... um. What kind of kissing? You know, kissing tongue, you know. Really? Yes. Oh, all right. So she's really after you. She's after everyone. That's the thing. I mean, oh, okay. She's baking, to, you know. So, um... I, I don't want to piss off the boyfriend, but how okay. do I, like, sort of, you know, get her away from me? I don't want to, like... No, oh, please. Now, uh, I'm not going to dignify this with an answer. This is one of those, uh, my penis is so big, I have difficulty riding a bicycle. What should I do? Is there any sort of mechanism or harness that, that I could buy? It's some sort of a novelty um, orthopedic store or some... Listen, you moron. You... The girl's coming on to you because you're sitting in some um, uh, uh, closet with her to, at a party, making out with her. How often do you have to see her, and, and just don't put yourself into that situation? Nothing wrong with saying no. Yeah, you could do that, too. <sighs> I'm sorry, I saw the word anal on here, and I'm going with that one. I figured. Tammy. Hello. I'm 23. Hello. We got Dr. Marcel tonight filling in for uh, Dr. Drew. And again, uh, any calls uh, that are of the um, cosmetic or reconstructive surgery origin, um, Dr. Marcel will be more than happy to answer. Okay, that's, that's your cue you to talk uh, now, Tammy. Great. Okay, I, I have a little problem, a kind of a question and a problem. I was hoping you can help me with. All right. All right. Um, my boyfriend, he likes anal stim stimulation. You know, I know it's in a rosin zone, and... You know, I was fine with that, but he's getting really kind of um, far with it, really into it. Like, he, like, wants to put things up there or wants, to, you know, to put have me put my finger up his, you know, his, mm -hmm. his anus. Yes, he's getting swept away with the whole anus craze. Oh, yes. This, I mean, he's getting really into it, like, wants to purchase a vibrator for his anus. Uh -huh. I was, and, you know, at first I thought it was no big deal, just like, you know, just, you know, the attention down there, but now it's getting really far into it. And I was wondering, I don't want to do this, and I've kind of let him know that I really was not into this, but it's like he's, he, it makes him, ha I mean, it makes him so happy. I don't want to deprive him of this. God bless you. I was wondering you. if this is weird. Could he have homosexual tendencies? Blah, blah, no. blah. No. Not necessarily. Some guys are into the butt stuff. Yeah, very it, much into for the him, butt stuff. It just, for him, it's just a very powerful erogenous zone. Prostatic I, I, stimulation is a... Uh, a recognized form of sexual activity. I don't recognize it in my church. <laughs> not in the Adam Carolla church. So do you think I should continue this when I'm not really into it? It kind of turns me off. What about me? Well, that's you know, just I'm... it. You need to have a have a talk with him. And... Well, we've, I mean, we've talked completely open about this. I mean, I don't like All right, it. let's do a little role-playing, Tammy. Okay, let's go. All right, uh, what's your boyfriend's name? <laughs> Mike. Mike? Uh-huh. All right, I'll be Mike. Okay. All right, you ready? Go. 
Uh, we'll we'll uh, uh, let's just say we're on the phone. Okay. All right, you got to pick up though. Bring. Hello. Bring. Hey. <laughs> Hey, uh, Tammy, this is uh, Ask Master Mike. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Uh, it's just, uh, it, I farted, so it uh, just made me think of you. <laughs> and uh, Sweet y- you know what I want to do uh, later? I want to uh, head over to the um, head shop, and uh, I want to pick up a vibrator for us to use later on tonight. You know, I mean, you could use it on me. Is that cool? You know, I mean, I'm not really into that, but if it makes you happy... Yeah. I guess so. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty into it. I, I'm. I'm surprised to hear that you're not into it. I thought you'd be into it. Well, it's kind of you know the whole idea. You know, it's, it's kind of it kind of grosses me out a little bit. Really? It does a little bit. Yeah. It's kind of you know it's kind of dirty. Yeah. Gross. Well. It kind of turns me off a little bit. I'm gonna uh, I have see. To change my sheets constantly. I I just you know. <laughs> Tams. Yes, honey. I'm gonna uh, evacuate my system and uh, shower up real good. And do the old uh, loofah on a stick thing? You always say that, but stuff still, you know, happens to come out. Well, I know, but you live ten minutes away, and it's a a pretty bumpy road. (laughs) Now, I think we're going to have to do this, and I really want you to work it right tonight, okay, baby? (laughs) I I try my hardest. I want you to do, once I get that vibrator... And and I want you to put it in me and work it like a like a like you're driving an 18 wheeler, but you couldn't find third gear. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, you gonna do that for me? Uh, I'll do that for you. <laughs> what the hell? Hey, Tammy. Yes. What the hell was that? What? You caved in immediately. Well, I want to make him happy. You know, I'm a pleaser. Wow. No kidding. <laughs> Just make sure you don't lose it. <clears throat> yeah, but here's. <laughs> Yeah, do you uh, recommend uh, putting a uh, tether on those things? Like when guys go uh, cave exploring um, underwater, how they'll uh, tie like a tether to them so they can find their way out? Right. Uh, Having been a general surgeon before I was a plastic surgeon, having had to remove uh, in the emergency room or in the operating room my fair share of foreign objects. Really? Yeah. Now give us us some of the things you may have removed. This will be a grist for uh, Tammy's mill. Well, there's the the standard light bulb. Oh, yeah. just a regular bulb? Yeah. How do you get something in there like that? I mean, a bulb, I can't take a goddamn bulb out of the cardboard package without breaking it. How do you put it in your ass? I know. I mean, I'm telling you, it's it, it never ceases to amaze me. Plaster of Paris. Oh, were they actually poured in? Uh, we, had, we had one gentleman, he uh, was an artist and wanted to make a mold of his... Uh, his rectum and uh, blue plaster of Paris up there. He blew it up there. Yeah, with uh, a hose, through a hose. Uh huh. And uh, then it hardened, and we couldn't right. get it out. Couldn't get it out. Asked us to save the mold as we were taking him to surgery. How? Uh, well, what do you mean save the mold? The mold is his ass, right? Well, it's the inside. How? How do you break that up? You have to. Ch- you have to chip away. <laughs> So you just use a little like uh, pneumatic, like like dentist uh, dentist type tools. You, you just use surgical surgical instruments to chip try to away. break it up. Right. How do you not just ask the person like, what were you thinking? I have asked people from time to time just to to kind of figure out what motivated them, but some of the answers are so bizarre that uh, you just have to shake your head and. Oh, yeah. So weird. I mean, and, and listen, he's, uh, he's, he's there to do a job. He's got his game face on. He doesn't Still, need to know so where the plaster came from. Still, or whatever in their butt. Uh, Didn't they think about it getting hard and how they were going to get it out? Uh, it's the, an artist I mean, in pursuit of uh, his craft. Yeah. People, uh, people tend to get their judgment gets cloudy when it comes so. to their own anus. All right, Tammy. Yes? Here's what you're going to have to explain to him. You're going to have to explain that you want to make him happy, but that you don't want to make yourself unhappy. And you're willing to make yourself unhappy for about 10 minutes, but that's it, okay? Because or maybe just unhappy a little bit, but not as far as he likes to go. With right. And if, you're gonna, if you make yourself unhappy too much and make him happy, it will only be temporary happiness for him because eventually the, you will turn on him. Guys, understand this. When you try to um, get a woman to do something she doesn't want to do, she may do it for a while, and you may get the best love or the most sex or whatever the hell uh, you're looking for for a very short period of time, but then it's going to be very short-lived because she will resent you and turn on you. Better to go uh, work, the, uh, work the installment plan. Don't a lot of your married friends tell you that the wife stops doing a lot of things after they get married? Yes. Is, uh, 
Oh, so don't get married. I see. Uh, I Very good advice, that. Dr. Marcel. All right. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk to uh, Casey, who's 19, is interested in getting a nose job, has some questions for the doc. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody now. Hey, it's a love line. Adam Carolla and Dr. Marcel filling in for Dr. Drew. I've had anal sex. Dr. Drew, please. He's on vacation uh, doing a little skiing. Michael McKeon will be in here tomorrow night. You know him from uh, Spinal Tap and uh, Squ- uh, Lenny, right? We had Squiggy in here. Yeah, he was Lenny. And a million other movies. God, this guy's been in a lot of movies. Anyway, Ben Folds 5 will be in here after that, then Crystal Method and uh, Blink-182. Hey, uh, Engineer Mike, not just yet, but um, get ready with the uh, Drew Shuffle and the Boogie. I think it's the least we could do, uh, seeing as how he's not here. All right, you ready to go forward here, uh, Dr. Marcel? Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Casey, yeah. you're 19. What's going on? I've been thinking about getting a nose job, and I was wondering how much it costs and how I can go about finding a surgeon. Well, in terms of the cost, it would depend on what you're trying to get done. Um, okay. I mean, it would, de- you know. Nothing are, drastic. Nothing it, drastic. You're yeah. just trying to refine your nose. Yeah, exactly. It varies a lot in different parts of the country, but it usually runs anywhere from $3,500 on up. On up? Yeah. Okay. And uh, believe me. 3500 for just uh, taking a lump out? <laughs> Well, it's a little more complicated than that. I mean, if she's got a dorsal hump, if she has a tip that needs to be refined. It's great. Hump. I just kind of want it to get, like, a little. I think that was a Bob Seger song, wasn't it? The dorsal, dorsal hump. hump? Something like that. Oh, that was the horizontal um, bump. Casey, right. one thing you really need to realize is that rhinoplasty or nose surgery is one of the most finesse surgeries in all of cosmetic surgery. So you definitely want to do your homework. You want to get more than one opinion. Um, How do I, like, find a surgeon? Well, th- you can call the American Society of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. I don't have, they have a 1-800 number, okay. and uh, they can um, give you board-certified plastic surgeons in your area. Okay. And, uh... Is a nose job cheaper in Kentucky than it is in L.A.? Probably. Well, I'm moving to San Jose in a few weeks, so that's probably... Oh, it's the nose job capital of the world. <laughs> I think New York City is. Oh, it is. Is that... Long the- Island. <laughs> um... I want to get a, I have a deviated septum. Right. And, and it, it's starting to really screw with me because I sleep with my mouth wide open because I can't breathe. You snore? No. I don't care about snoring. But, I no, I don't snore, but I can't breathe through my nose. Right. I mean, not well enough to sleep with my mouth shut. Right. So what happens is is uh, my teeth get covered with gook. I get this cotton your mouth. mouth. Yeah, i got to keep waking breathing. up. i get a sore throat. I, I get lint and stuff in there. I even had a, um, rob, um, a family of robins. They nested uh, in my mouth after a very long night's sleep. But I want to get this thing taken care of. Now, can well, I do that? That's usually covered by insurance. Oh, it is? Right, because that's, that's for function, not for appearance. How much would something like that cost? Well, if you have decent insurance, it won't cost you a thing. And uh, what about, will it change my voice? No. It won't? No, it shouldn't. Why not? Oh, if you'd like it to change your voice. Well, I mean, I I talk now. Right, you might you won't appear yeah. maybe as nasal at times. Yeah, see, that's my calling card, the whole nasality. Well, then don't get the surgery. Yeah, but I got it. I can't my my uh, my I can't take it with my mouth anymore. I can't breathe. Do you think you have sleep apnea? Mm, no. You mean do I snore and and do you do wake all... up several times at night? I wake up every night. Like uh, three or four times. You yeah. might have a degree of sleep apnea. I have something because I don't sleep like a human being. I want to sock that Drew in the throat every time he tells me. Drew tells me, we, we finish the show at 12. You know where Drew lives from right. the studio. Right. In my mind, Drew lives about 40 minutes from the studio. Yeah. He swears he's asleep by 1230 every night. I said, Drew, how do you, what, what are you on the five freeway when you go to bed? No. I get home uh, right at 12.30, and I'm asleep before my head hits the pillow, he tells me. That's when I want to punch him. I have to pace back and forth in my bathrobe and, um, uh, you know, watch, uh, watch all the late-night shows and everything. I can't fall asleep, and then I keep waking up throughout the night. 
you you might have a degree of sleep apnea. I'm sure I do. That's why I feel so run down all the time. It's true. People with sleep apnea can have chronic fatigue. Yeah. Um, because they are not getting a good night's sleep. And sleep apnea is basically you're you're not breathing enough. You you literally wake up because you need to get a, get a good breath. Yeah, but I don't I don't I don't do all that huffing and puffing. You wouldn't know it. All right. I got to look into that. Should I go to one of those uh, sleep research centers? Um, you should first contact a, a good ear, nose, and throat specialist. Yeah. Could you do that? I'd be happy to give you a good oh, okay. referral. You're not the man, though. I want to talk to someone who knew what they were doing. That's all. Lisa. Yeah, hi. You're 21. Yeah, I have stretch marks on my breasts, okay, and I was yes. wondering if there's anything I can do about that. Have you had any kids? <laughs> no. You want some? No. No. How large are your breasts? Like a large bee. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's bad. Normally, you take the bad with the good. It's like, well, there's some stretch marks, but the reason they're stretch marks is because they're, they're so tremendously big, you know? But yeah, if you got the stretch marks and the small breasts, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a bad deal. Do, doing an augmentation for stretch marks won't. It may it obviously stretch them out a little, which may flatten them and make them less noticeable, uh -huh. but it won't get rid of them entirely. Uh, some people are doing, they're trying some of the different lasers to try and improve them, and depending upon the color of your stretch marks, they may be improved that way. Okay. But uh, there's no surefire way of getting rid of them. Okay. I don't mind a stretch mark, Lisa. <laughs> it's not bad to me. Guys aren't uh, that turned off by stretch marks. Really? I've never heard a guy complain about stretch marks. On the breath, though? Yeah, he, well, you know, if he's lucky enough to catch a glimpse of them, <laughs> but no, I've never heard a guy complain about that. Okay. And I hang out with guys that are pigs. <laughs> and they make fun of uh, women, you know, because of, um, you know, any, any, any one of a thousand uh, physical imperfections. But I've never heard any complaints about stretch marks. That's low on the list, I think. Yeah, it is. I think, uh, I think you women are a little bit uh, too, too worried about the stretch marks. Hey, uh, Engineer Mike. You got the uh, Dr. Drew boogie and the shuffle? You want to hear them back to back? You do? No, oh, okay. Well, we haven't played this in uh, quite some time, but I think it's high time uh, we do play it. Uh, the Dr. Drew boogie and the Dr. Drew shuffle. Pee on this stick. <laughs> Makes me sick. Pee on this stick. Makes me sick. If I find you stealing my underwear again, here's what's going to happen. Asshole. Stuff like this. Stuff like this, stuff like this makes me sick. You're fat. Asshole. You're fat. Can I say that? You're fat. Darn. You're overweight. I want to be dominated. You're gay. I want to be dominated. You're gay. When I was 19, I ate about four boiled peyote buttons and stayed up all night but felt no effect. It's called intimacy. Can I say that? This is not acceptable. Can I say that? You're fat. Not acceptable. Pee on this stick. Not acceptable. Boiled peyote button. Not acceptable. You're overweight. Not acceptable. Can I, say, can I that? Say, that? say that? She drinks until she barely has her senses about her, and then she can relax enough to have sex with me. Dr. Drew is right. Ow! Get down, get down. Asshole. Get down, get down. You're gay. Get down, get down. You're fat. Get down, get down. You're sick. If I find you, have sex with me. Gee, it hurts. Have sex with me. Faggot better, have sex with me. I want to have sex with me. I was bored, so I had my tongue pierced. I was bored, so I put a spear to my penis. I tried to be straight, or I thought I shouldn't be straight, and I was confused. Loser. You know, pee on this makes me sick. It hurts when I urinate. It makes me sick. Anal sex makes me sick. This guy's penis makes me sick. I've had anal sex. Gee, it hurts. I've got these lesions. Gee, it hurts. I'm still a virgin. Gee, it hurts. It's called intimacy. Can I say that? Ow! You're fat. Ow! Gay. Ow! Confused. Ow! You're sick. Ow! You're bored. Ow! Still a virgin. Dysfunctional. Can I say that? Dr. Drew is right. My lover likes me a lot, but sometimes I'm scared because he is very active. He gives me oral sex. I just give him the hand. <laughs> the hand. That was uh, Drew doing a little editing on the fly. It didn't say the hand <laughs> on there. I think it may have said a hand job or something, but uh, Drew... Uh, you know, he has a degree of uh, dignity, and he didn't want to say hand job, so he, uh, he, he a nice, noticeable pause, and then he puts uh, the hand. Very classy. Very smooth. Silky smooth. And uh, kudos to Engineer Mike, who put those together. Uh, the Dr. Drew shuffle, followed by the Dr. Drew boogie. 
You know, uh, to me, that's like a, um, oh, it's like a Chuck Berry song. It just stands the test of time. It never gets old. So it's the least we could do, considering uh, the doc was not in tonight. All right, let me try to work this time in out. Why don't we tease a call here? Sheila. Yeah, hi. Hey, you're 18. What's going on there? Not much. I wanted to start off with saying I think you're great, Adam. And I was wondering if you were going to be doing the HF Festival again this year. Um, I have no idea what the hell uh, I'll be doing at that time of year, but I've done it the last two years, so I would, uh, I'd love to do it uh, the following year, or uh, this coming year, I should say. Okay. That's uh, Washington, D.C., great station. They fill uh, RFK Stadium, great bands. It's like what they do out here with uh, K-Rock, right. but it's even on a, on a larger scale. And uh, good people, they treat me like the god I am in that city. <laughs> Although last time I got hold of some, um, uh, some like, sushi and crab cakes and uh, cheap vodka and was mm. uh, in my hotel room vomiting until <laughs> noon the day of the concert. As a matter of fact, the concert started, and I was sitting in my hotel room vomiting. Thankfully, I, I got to the concert and ran into the uh, Boss Tones, who, um, who nursed me back to health on a uh, steady diet of uh, nicotine and Gatorade. All right, Sheila. Okay, my question is this. I'm dating this guy at work, and um, we're kind of keeping it like on the down low. Like, we, don't, we haven't let anybody know, and we act very like nonchalant and stuff, and nobody knows. But there's this girl that likes him at work that also works with us. And lately she's been, like, confiding in me about, like, how much she likes him and, like, asking advice, like, how, to like, to ask him out. And, and I'm kind of just sitting there listening, like, not kind of just in shock, like, not knowing what to tell her. And I was just wondering if, like, I should say anything. I feel horrible, but I don't want, like, it to get around that we're dating. All right. This is a, this is a good predicament and a good place to... Uh do our uh, do our break so when we come back uh, me and marcel will converge on sheila's problem the phone number for love line is 1-800-LOVE-191 love line i'll be right back hey love line dr marcel in here old friend of dr drew's the uh, cosmetic and plastic surgeon and reconstructive surgeon. Filling in for Dr. Drew tonight, who'll be gone the better part of this week, and we will be back in 10 seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. Could this be President Clinton? <laughs> I didn't read that. Uh, Loveline, Adam Carolla, Dr. Marcel filling in for Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Michael McKeon, you remember him from uh, Spinal Tap and uh, Lenny and Squiggy and about, uh, I think it was in those Brady movies. He's, he's in like every third movie. I think there's some kind of law that either uh, him or Michael can by uh, undoing. It's that, uh, hey, it's the Loveline guy. I'm buying you a drink. And you know, you're in, in, uh, if you're like me, Dr. Marcel, you don't turn away free booze. I mean, it, booze is so expensive, especially at a nightclub, you know, five, six bucks with the tip and everything. And uh, the bartender knew who I was, and the bartender said, I'm buying him a drink. And they go, oh, no, you're not. Oh, well, well fellas, you can both. Yeah, yeah, I got two hands. And I uh, was vomiting the entire day. But I, I blame it on the uh, D.C. crab cake. All right, now, who the hell uh, were we talking to? Sheila? Yeah. We didn't finish her, right? You're 18, right? Right. Okay, so your sitch is you're working with a guy. You're having a relationship with a guy you're working with. Right. But you're not telling everybody because you don't want to uh, rock the boat at work. And now there's some girl who's confiding in you about her love for this guy who you're secretly dating. Right. Well, where do you work? At a restaurant. Mm hmm What are you, a waitress? Yeah. What's he do? He, he's also a, he's another waiter. Oh, he is? Yeah. Yeah. That's not a real job, by the way. Thank you. I mean, what I'm saying is, is any time a job involves tips, it's okay to date whoever, willy-nilly. Okay, but... They're are, like uh, uh, barbers. Have you ever they can date each other. Huh? Have you ever worked at a restaurant? I worked at a restaurant for 13 years before I got into radio. Okay, then you know the, the type of gossip that goes around and, like... I just don't want to be, like, dealt with that at all. Oh, no, wait a minute. That was something else. No, I never worked at a restaurant. Ann and Lisa were very confused over it. That's right. I clean carpets. 
and, and did construction. But it's really the same job. I mean, it's like... Not really. No, it's not really that job at all. You're right. Okay, Sheila. All right, so you got me. <laughs> all right, so, oh, wait, what's the deal? Yeah, the, the people talk. Right, like, it's, it's just stupid. Like, people just, like, run their mouths, and yeah. it's just not, like, anything that I want to be a part of, really. Yeah, but it's a job where you work 25 hours a week, you get a bunch of tips, and you steal croutons and a Thousand Island dressing. It's not a real job. Don't no. Let's not get into this. It is. It is a real job. Well, let let That's people stressful. let people know that. Uh, go ahead and see. As long as he's not your manager or something, it's no big uh, deal, right? There's there's no company policy against coworkers commingling, is there? Not really, but like, like the last thing I really want to do is let anybody know, like anybody, because everybody will give like everybody else a hard time and like. All right. So here's what you do. Here's what you do. Okay. You smooth it out. Smooth it out with him. Get your story straight with him, and then you tell her. I don't trust her enough to do that. Shh, 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 shh. Like, I really... Like, hey, hey, I'm telling you to lie. Just hear me out. Okay, okay. What do you think this is? You tell him that you are going to tell her that you heard him talking about his girlfriend. Now, of course, you never mention it's you. Right. She starts confiding in you, and you go, oh. Yeah, I think he's great, too, but you know what? I heard him telling one of the cooks, uh, or Mr. Big Boy himself, that uh, he had a girlfriend, and uh, blah, 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 blah. And you just get her going on uh, on that trail. Hey, Ann, you know what? Uh, oh, you're on the phone. I'll tell Lisa and uh, Marcel and uh, Engineer Mike. Funny thing happened. You know, we, we, we taped a whole bunch of these TV shows uh, last week. And we had, uh, I, I, I can't remember the guy's name. I, I won't say the guy's name because um, I'll, I don't want to embarrass the guy. But um, we had uh, one of the guests from the show. He, he may have had a beer or two uh, while we were taping last weekend. And uh, he's, uh, he's sitting next to the new girl, uh, Diane Farr, on the sofa. And I guess he's uh, getting a little amorous with her. <laughs> Not, you know, maybe during, during the commercial or uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when. So Diane, who I don't know what the hell her status is. I don't know if she's got a boyfriend or what the hell's going on. But she says to the guy, like during the commercial break, hey, uh, listen, I got a boyfriend. And the guy says, uh, where is he? What do you mean? Forget about him. We'll go out and we'll have a drink. You know, like, like good actors should do. I mean, hell, why get into acting if you can't do one of these things once in a while? And uh, anyway, apparently then she tells him that I'm her boyfriend. Okay. Now, this is totally unbeknownst to me. Which means I should get oral sex from her for at least once for uh, going on with that charade. So during the next commercial, I'm sitting there on my uh, little uh, expensive leather chair. And this guy leans forward and he goes, hey, man, it's cool. Uh, I hope you didn't take any offense, man. It was no big deal. And I said, uh, offense? Yeah, man. I mean, you, see, you understand, man. I mean, you know, she's an attractive girl, and, and, you know, I'm just talking, man. It's, you know, And I'm sitting there going, uh, what the F is this guy talking about? And he, I just, but I don't give away anything. I just sit there, and he just kind of keeps going, and eventually he, he gets to the point where he says he didn't mean any disrespect to me or Diane, and she's a fine lady, and blah, 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 blah. And then I just start nodding my head. <laughs> so here's the point. If you're going to uh, go ahead and lie, that's fine, but you've got to tell the people that uh, you're lying with or to or about. You know what I mean? Get that conspiracy thing. Yeah, you've got to tell everybody. You've got to get on the same page. Otherwise, uh, you're going to get screwed. I could have easily said, uh, what are you talking about? i got no idea. What you I'm gay. Please. <laughs> Women give me the creeps. I get the heebie-jeebies. There's a whole cootie factor. Tia. Yes. You're 17. Hi. What's going on there? Well, I have a boyfriend I've been for with a year now. And people, like girls, like his ex-girlfriends and stuff, tell me that, well, they're going back out with him or they're going to have sex. They're having sex with him and stuff. Yeah. And I asked him about it, and he gets mad at me and says, it's not true, and he hangs up on me when I call him. Mm -hmm. So you guys are pretty tight. Yeah, he's like... You know, with relationships, you're supposed to not get, I mean, if you're doing something, you're supposed to tell them, you know? Yeah. And then, 
this morning. Wait, what's the deal? You're talking to his ex-girlfriends? His ex I'm friends with some of his ex-girlfriends. Uh-huh. Because I've been friends with them for quite a long time. It's not just that. They know who I am. Uh-huh. I go to the same school with them. All right. And then I'm moving... I'm going moving somewhere else that is just like a mile away, you know. Uh huh. And um, I'll ask him about it, and he'll lie, he'll just say no, it's not true, and get mad at me, and hang up on me, you know. Uh huh. He hangs up. Huh? He hangs up. I bet you're doing a lot of complaining though. No. No, he just hangs up. And like this morning, like last night, it was my par we had a party last night. Right. And this girl came up to him and said he knows her for quite a while. Says I need I got a it's some like fixing, like she wanted to have more sex with somebody. Uh huh. And I got mad because. Well, what the, said, where the hell were these parties when I was in high school? <laughs> I was getting into these threesomes. She just well, she didn't like the guy, so she just gave him oral sex because, uh, you know, I mean, he did buy uh, buy her like a um, club sandwich and a Mr. Pib oh. and. I mean, what the hell is going on out there? Yeah, we just, well, he, to, we just missed right. out completely. I know. Yeah, well, she said right in front of me to him. All right. How old is this guy? He's 17. Uh-huh. Well, what do you like about this guy, by the way? I, you know, I've known him for 10 years. All right. Okay? And I thought he was different from my other boyfriends, ex-boyfriends. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. You know. All right. You got I, any kids or anything? Huh? You're pregnant? Mm, no. Really? It was at one time, but we had I had a miscarriage on it. I oh, did. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> I know that doesn't sound right. You know, if you if you uh, buy the transcript of this show, that's going to sound real cruel. But um, I'm I'm guessing you're not ready to be a mom. Am I right, uh, yeah. Tia? Uh, are you using protection now? Yeah. You are. Yeah. Like what? Condoms, and I'm on birth control. Okay, good. I want you uh, each each uh, night when you eat your your birth control pill. Uh -huh. I want you to eat a condom too. Why? I want you to swallow a condom. No. I I just want to play extra safe with you. All right. I I don't know. Listen, you got to communicate with the guy. What the hell are you telling us? I mean, you, you call him. You, he's got girls, ex girlfriends coming on to him. You tell him he hangs up on you, so he's not treating you right. So dump him. Sounds dump like he's him. guilty. <clears throat> yeah, it sounds like he's guilty. But, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you, I don't lie to him or nothing, you know. Okay. Well, he's an idiot. But uh, that makes you an idiot for being with him, doesn't it? Yeah. Hey, I've been with him for a year. Give me a break. All right. That's a year's worth of idiocy. And he's never beat me up or nothing, so. Oh. That's kind of refreshing. That's well, worth staying around for, then. i got to give him some sort of uh, windbreaker for that. Well, hey, I had boyfriends beat me up. Here. I know. Listen, Tia. What? Here's the vibe I'm getting from you. Uh, maybe not the world's greatest family. I don't know where your dad is. My dad's in prison. Oh, okay. At least you know where he is. A lot. Most of our listeners don't know where dad is. All right. So your dad's in prison. Maybe your mom. Uh, your mom may have made not may not have made the greatest choices when it came to picking men. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because uh, the dad's in prison, and maybe she picked a couple other bad guys after dad. Yeah, and maybe your mom got pregnant when she was a little bit too young, she too. She was 15. Well, okay, I was wrong about that one. Oh, no, yeah, I guess that is pretty young, even by love line standards. So here's the deal, Tia. Your job is not to do what your mom did or does. Hold on. Is that your stepdad? Okay. Um, okay. Tia. Yeah. Stay in school. Don't get pregnant. Yeah. And get counseling. You understand? Yeah. And stay away from guys. Don't make the same mistake your mom's made. Please. Break the chain, would you please? Yeah. Okay. Don't get pregnant and stay in school. Okay, thanks. All right, Tia. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, boy. <sighs> yeah, someone like Tia needs needs some, some counseling just because she's <sighs> just going to go on repeating history. Oh. Uh. Dr. Marcel, I, I swear to God, when I get into power, I'm, I'm telling you, I will have my goon squad, um, guys in the pork pie hats with the, um, the Hawaiian shirts and the uh, wraparound sunglasses who uh, uh, like these Guatemalan hit squads. They just go from uh, door to door and silencers on 9 uh, millimeters and just start putting people down.
like um, what I would call, here's the way I'm going to do it when I'm in charge. I will, um, first off, I will take away all children from uh, parents that are unworthy. And uh, I'm going to have uh, Bill Cosby and Felicia Rashad uh, raise them on an island. Probably uh, Australia. I got a lot of room there. I know we don't own it. But I think it's the least they could do for us. And I think uh, it's one big penal colony anyway, quite frankly, with a nice tourist, uh, tourist industry. I say we, and they got a lot of room. We're, I'm going to raise all these kids separately, and I'm going to put the parents down. Because uh, we get calls night after night on this show of just people that, uh, yeah, dad's in prison, and then uh, stepmom brought in, uh, then mom brought in stepdad, and stepdad immediately starts sexually molesting me. Right. And to me, uh, mom, uh, not worthy. Yeah. Oh, the dog's yapping in the back. <laughs> Christ's sake. All right, where the hell are we? I, I saw the word brass, and I'm going to this one now. Melissa. Yeah. You're 20. I sure am. Listen. Not you, Melissa. Okay. All of you, uh, don't be as big a F up as your parents. That's your goal in life. Okay, go ahead, Melissa. Okay, I was wanting to ask um, Dr. Marcel about the breast tuck. Oh. Well, because... there's, there's a breast reduction. Breast okay. tuck, and, you know, you might be thinking of a breast lift. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's like um, where they don't really reduce it, they just... Right, just give it a little better shape. Yes, um, yeah. and yeah. Snug, uh, snug up the skin envelope. Yeah. Between your shoulders, right? Yeah. No. Nope. And you can get a facelift <laughs> as well that way, can't you? Uh, not quite. Take care of that goiter on your neck and lift your breasts at the same time. Yeah. Because I'm you. only 20 and they're already bad. <laughs> well, what, what size are you? Um, 36D. Oh, how bad can that be? <laughs> One problem with just doing a breast lift... Um, for someone with uh, the size of breasts that you have is that it's just a skin envelope trying to hold them up and it, you probably stretch out with time so maybe something you'd have to have done every so, so many years. How do they do that process? There's usually an incision around the nipple, down the front of the breast, Ooh. and in the crease. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, you probably should maybe even consider a, at least a small breast reduction, go down at least to a C. Oh, wait a minute. Why a do they have to off. do all... Can't they just... Um, you, you, you watch me here? Couldn't they just sort of pull the skin up yeah. that was above the breast and, and, and sort and of lift them up? Pleat, and you'd pleat the skin. Yeah, all right. So you're like a nice set of sl uh, pair of slacks or something. And you have to... You, you, part of the reason that the breast sag is that the skin is stretched out. It's too much skin, so you have to reduce the skin envelope. Right. And so you have to remove the skin somehow. Uh huh. So you do it around the nipple and through the. Yeah, that's one way. There's another. There's different ways of doing it, but they do involve at least the minimum incision is one all the way around the nipple. And that's called a periareolar lift, where they just uh, take skin in a circular fashion. Uh, what about like I've heard women talk about um, where they get the implant um, behind the the breast tissue. Right. What that does is uh, that you fill out the skin envelope more so it makes the breast look fuller right. trouble is you already have a big breast uh -huh. you already have a heavy breast yeah, so you add more weight trouble, though. Yeah, you add more weight to it and your breasts are going to sag even more so you're certainly setting yourself up for a vicious cycle and unfortunately right. that that's right. actually a good point um, a lot of women that are getting breast implants are being told well we'll put in whatever size you want but you probably have to be upgraded every few years and that my personal feeling is that's been quite a disservice to women across the United States by putting in these real large breast implants that are very heavy, that are going to stretch the skin. Yeah. The women are going to lose the fullness that they had for a while. Then in order to recreate that fullness, they put in a bigger implant, and you just set yourself up for a cycle of problems. Mm, to me, that just sounds like the chest keeps getting bigger. That uh, would be true. All right. Well, there's negative cycles, and then uh, there's positive cycles. They're not all, not all negative cycles. I'm saying. Uh, but couldn't they just tighten the skin up every uh, year? Right. You, you could, but year? that in, once again involves incisions and scarring. Oh, okay. There's, there's nothing is without oh, a trade off. I know. I know. And uh, who do you, where do these, um, these uh, dancers, these uh, erotic dancers and porn stars who go for the novelty? Jugs. Where do they go? Are there certain? I know I ask you this every time you yeah. come in here, but I'm it, I'm I, I'm I'm like a newborn with you. I, I want to know. 
there are obviously there are some plastic surgeons or cosmetic surgeons who have uh, get a reputation for doing large breasts novelty work novelty work yeah they get you have to have the implants custom made yeah so i mean like how much are the implants themselves if uh, from from the company the implant if it's not a custom made if it's an off the rack or off right. the shelf one they're like $1500 a pair wow right wow but custom probably or, I didn't know there was that you know I thought it was mainly uh labor but I didn't know it was parts yeah the the price of the implants more than doubled after all the lawsuit problems oh, all right there you go well you whacked out feminists with the uh funky breasts see what you do you hurt all of us now we all pay all right so um uh so how much are the big novelty ones? So if you have to have them custom made, I imagine it really costs it, something. They probably are two thousand dollars on up. And uh, what is the biggest you've seen? The biggest I've seen are like eight hundred cc implants. That's uh, what's like a good D cup size. D cup is around between four hundred and fifty and six hundred cc's. So uh, eight hundred is almost twice that so uh, size. Big. And uh, you have a, to put them a, in incrementally. Uh, depends on how stretched out the skin is. Yeah, you may have to oh. to work your way up to a certain size. Oh, the skin I mean, is really uh, tight. some of this uh, now, some of these women I see in uh, these magazines I, I collect. Um, I mean, it's just grotesquely big. Right. It, it's novelty circus big. It. it Do you have to? You got to be sort of big to get there in the first place. I mean, I mean, to have that sort of you know uh, abnormal you know twin. Peaks, um, you know. I mean, it's a huge circus type brass. Don't you have to be God? Doesn't God have to give you a big set of cans just initially? No, skin will stretch with time. So some of these women started off fairly small and just keep getting as the skin stretches. They can fit a bigger implant in. Oh my God! Hey, uh, engineer Mike, uh, pull up uh, some of the uh, large breasted stuff off the internet, would you? I'd like to uh, examine that with Dr. Marcel later. All right, so uh, when we come back, we'll speak to uh, six-year-old Linda, who's uh, pierced her own nipple, and she wants to know how to care for it. Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. We'll be right back. Said it, cherry Poppin' and Daddies, and we got to get that band on there. Uh, I'll tell you, my listener CD at home. Uh, I saw Cherry Poppin' and Daddies at the uh, House of Blues open for Real Big Fish. Very good band live, by the way. Can't go wrong with this crap live, and they just sound exactly like this. Bunch of horns, guys in zoot suits, uh, crooning away. <laughs> Holding the, uh, holding the plunger over the end of the trumpet. We call that the mute, you know. All right, uh, Dr. Marcel filling in for Dr. Drew. Adam filling in for Adam. Michael McKeon tomorrow night. Ben Folds 5, Crystal Method, Blink-182, all coming up this week. And when we left off, we were going to speak to Linda. Linda's 16. Linda? Hi, Adam. Hey. I love you. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, I'm known as the ugly one in certain circles. <laughs> um, I pierced my nipple yesterday, and I was wondering... Ooh, what, what happened? Huh? Don't you just want to... I want to say that instinctively. Like, when people say they pierce their nipple, they pierce their penis, I want to say, oh, my God, I'm sorry. What happened? Was you uh, climbing a fence, or... <laughs> you did it intentionally. Yes. Yes. And I was wondering what I should do to take care of it. How did you do it? I stuck a pin through it. That's nice. Did you sterilize the pin? No. Uh -huh. What were you thinking? Were you like in a were you rush for time or something? Sort of. Yeah, I understand. You know, how long can the sterilization process take? Up upwards of eight hours. Well, if it's a if it's a pin, that, you don't, even well, rubbing it down up. with alcohol at least is going to help. What about the whole match sterilization thing? Seem to leave a lot of soot on the pen. Would leave some soot too, but um, if you don't if you don't clean the skin, no matter how sterile the instrument is, you can <coughs> still get an infection. I clean with the skin, and then I put ambisol around the area. 
to Ambisol, numb it. to numb it. Yeah, the stuff you put on your gums? Yeah. And this is just a pin you put through your nipple. Uh-huh. And you want to tell me why? Mm, my friend told me she was going to do it and asked me if I would do it too, and it sounded cool. And so, did you have a good time doing it? <laughs> All right, listen, let's not pass any moral judgment on uh, poor Linda, Dr. Marcel, your doctor. I uh, uh, see, I wonder... I mean, here's the thing that I'm, I'm amazed about. Um, I'm a guy. I, I played football for 10 years. I, I boxed uh, for 10 years. I've, I've, been, I've been, had my ass kicked by the best of them. But I'm way too much, uh, too big a pussy to, take, uh, to hold still, take a pin, and push it through mm-hmm. uh, a part of my body. I mean, I couldn't do it. I, I, would, uh, I just couldn't. I, right. I couldn't do it. I'm 33 years old. I am a man. I couldn't do it. No way. So... Um, I wonder act- how you can do that as a as a lady at 16. It actually didn't hurt that bad. I still I couldn't I couldn't even watch. I didn't cry um, or anything. All right, but here's the question that I have, Linda. Hmm. See, and, and and you can you can help explain this. But right. Dr. Marcel and I were looking at each other across that because we're thinking there's got to be something wrong with you. No, there's not. I mean, you got to be depressed. No. You got to hate your family. Well, kind of. Oh, you hate your family. Sort of. Yeah. What's their problem? Just, they're, like, always on my case about something. Yeah. And they just won't leave me alone. And you sound kind of depressed, really, Linda. I'm not. I'm trying to be quiet. Oh, okay. Because my parents are, like, in the other room. I see. And I don't want them to find out. All right. About my nipple. All right. So, Marcel, uh, tell her what to do. Well, one, I mean, this is just a pin that's stuck through there. You're, are you going to eventually replace it with a hoop? or? I want to. Okay. You should go to, uh, I don't know what state you're in, but uh, there's certain states that have laws against uh, kids under 18 getting pierced. I'm in California. Oh. Don't you think she should uh, talk to uh, a place that does this and uh, just pick their brain learn, a, little learn a little bit? something about sterile technique. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, if you could set yourself up for, at the worst case, a very bad infection. You could have a real problem. You'd have to be on antibiotics. You know, it's, a pierce, I don't have a problem with piercing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to get on your case for it. But you're doing something to your body. You should at least get a little research to know what the potential downside of it is for you. When in doubt, uh, dunk it in alcohol. That's my uh, motto. I'll 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 uh, put uh, isopropyl on an apple before I eat it, <laughs> just just to play it safe. You never know. Yeah. If it's a coin toss, uh, always lands on the alcohol for me. You know what I mean? And I always, by the way, always have time to sterilize. I'm never in so big a rush that I can't uh, take uh, a cotton ball, a little rubbing alcohol, and wipe it on the old nipple row. You know what I'm saying, Marcel? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's wrong with everyone. I swear to God, though, see, to me, there's got to be something wrong with Linda to do this. Oh, it, it, maybe I'm old-fashioned. I, I don't know what it is. But listen, I don't want to pass judgment. I would open the phone book. I'd find a place that does piercings. I would call them up, and they'll tell you, yeah, go ahead and use rubbing alcohol or go uh, use some hydrogen peroxide and do it every other three times a day for blah, blah, blah. Right. And th- they'll just probably just tell you right over the phone what to do. Probably. And they'd probably know more than uh, we would, even though uh, Marcel has, uh, has his background. He's still not a... Uh, He's not a nipple man. I don't know if you knew that. Matt. Uh, hey, what's going on? Hey, you're 17. Yeah, um, I'm calling on regarding this uh, call you had earlier. Uh-huh. Uh, that girl, Tia. Right. Yeah, um, I'm the so-called boyfriend she's talking about. Oh, you are? Yes. All righty. Now we're getting somewhere. Now let me just see if uh, memory serves. Tia was uh, 17. Dad's in prison. Right. Uh, she has, uh, had, or has, I should say, a boyfriend and, uh, whose ex-girlfriends come up to her and tell her about things that he's doing, and she calls him and wants to talk to him about it, and he hangs up. Right. So you're saying that's you, Matt? Yeah, that's me. Well, you sound relatively sane. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so, uh, what's going on with Tia? Well, the deal is, um, see, I'm like, her cousin's my best friend. Uh-huh. And... You know, we're always <laughs> hanging out together, and then, you know, I'll go to, I'll, I'll just, like, be downtown, she'll be there, and she'll see me talking to these girls. All right. And all of a sudden, automatically, because somebody said something that I liked or some stupid crap like that, and all of a sudden she comes up to me, 
and starts saying that she's my girlfriend. Yeah. And it's just not true. Tia's not your girlfriend. Right. She's not my girlfriend. She's she's <sighs> mentally ill. And oh, she, she is. And she um she twists words around. Yeah. Well. So. You know, to be fair to Tia, I think um. I think Tia, I would uh, liken Tia to maybe a uh, puppy that got raised in a tough environment. Right. Yeah, they, now, uh, it's kind of hard to blame them for some of the stuff they do as an adult uh-huh. or as a teenager. I, I get the feeling, uh, I mean, I'm just going off of uh, her dad being in, in, uh, in jail. Right. Unless it's like, uh, what was it, Michael Milken or someone like that. It probably wasn't junk bonds. Um, I'm guessing it was maybe heroin or uh, vehicular manslaughter or armed robbery. So, you know, Tia comes from kind of a uh, difficult environment. Yeah. So I, I think you should be uh, as compassionate to her as you, as you can, man. Right. All I'm trying to do is be her friend, but that, she, that doesn't seem to work. She still calls. Right. And she'll call and she'll hang up, <clears throat> and I'll tell her to stop, you know, and right. she doesn't stop. And I've, I've been harassed by her so many times. Okay. And I'm just calling to clarify that... Well, you're off, uh, you're off my hit list. Uh, oh, uh... I never knew I was on it. Yeah, I gotta get to the phone, though, Matt. <laughs> Matt, are you at home now? Yeah, I'm at home. Okay, uh... Shut the lights up, and uh, don't answer the door if someone comes knocking, all right? No problem. All right, Matt. I knew I should have got a walkie-talkie for those guys. Uh, they're, due to, they're calling me from the Hollywood Denny's at 2.30 in the morning. I, I just hope they haven't got around to Matt's place yet. Yeah, Tia, I, I think we kind of, uh, we didn't spend too much time on Tia's boyfriend. I think we did tend to spend more time on Tia because uh, Tia sounded like there was something up with her. Yeah, Tia, Tia has had some problems. Right, and uh, Tia needs to work out these problems. Um, Jake. Yeah. You're 24. How's it going? Good. Good. That's, that's the question I've got. Um, I'm married, uh, separated for about three months now. I got a nine month old little baby and my wife um, told me about three weeks ago that she's sick and tired of men. I ruined her, blah blah blah, and she doesn't want to ever date a man again and now she's dating a twenty two year old kid. Mm-hmm. And I found that out tonight. Um, uh huh. So when she said man, she meant uh, anyone older than twenty two? Yeah, yeah. She she took me when I was nineteen and kinda in a way. To a point, forced me into marriage. Not really, but to a point. Uh, how old is she? She's 27. She's 27 now? Yeah. So she was like 24 when you met her or something? 22. 23. 23. And um, forced you into marrying her? Kind of. No. How'd she do that? Well. I just want to know because I don't want to fall for it myself. No, well, we see, the thing is I was, I was young, um, didn't really want to settle down too much. Ended up falling in love with her when she was with another man, and it took that for me to realize I wanted to be with her. But she told me throughout the whole time we were dating that she wanted to have kids and be married by a certain time because she didn't want to be an old parent. Uh huh. So I realized if I. Rather be an incapable young parent who uh, was still pretty effed up. But if I wanted to keep her, then that's pretty much the only way that I could have stayed with her. So, you know, uh-huh. we got married. And... All, right. All right. Well, a man makes mistakes. Yeah. Um, she sounds like someone who uh, needs a lot of chaos in her life. Would you say that's true, Jake? Chaos, as in what do you mean? Well, be like, uh, remember the old Get Smart series? Uh-uh. You don't remember Get Smart? I don't. Not a fan of Don Adams? No. No. So you probably wouldn't know uh, Dick Gregory or Dick Sean or someone like that, would you? No. No, I think one of them played Jaime the Robot. Never heard of Get Smart? I haven't. Oh, hold on, now we're on to something else. No, no wonder she fooled you into marrying her. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jake. You've never heard of Get Smart? No. Hey, you got the theme? Uh... Sound familiar, Jake? It doesn't. Jake, where were you, uh, were you raised in uh, Nova Scotia? If it's the same as Utah. Wow. <laughs> You're from, uh, but you know about Davy and Goliath, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, uh... I, uh, I no, guess. I, see, I, <clears throat> yeah, wait, I'm not done talking about Get Smart. Okay. I can't believe there's someone who's 24 years old and never heard of Get Smart. Uh, you know who Mel Brooks is? What's Mel Brooks? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you do? I do. You ever seen Blazing Saddles? I have. Oh, okay. 
Uh, he used to do the get smart thing. Okay. All right. Um, the question is, too, is my, I noticed you guys talking about uh, enlargement, breast enlargements. Um, uh -huh. My wife, she is a stripper. Oh, she is. And she just got them, and two weeks after that is when she left me. All right. She had them. All right, but, Jake, here's what I'm saying to you. I know you may not be in any position to absorb this because of uh, the telltale don't know get smart is thing. That's the litmus test I use. But she needs chaos in her life. There are uh, many people that are this way. You, you ever watch that show, uh, Cops? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know the guys who've uh, they've been on parole? Uh, it's actually they've been paroled for like the fifth time in, in three and a half years. And it's uh, 2.30 in the morning, and uh, they're wearing a pair of underwear, and uh, they threaten their neighbor with a spoon. And uh, the cops have to wrestle them away from uh, the guy's uh, mailbox, which you're trying to kick the crap out of. And you think to yourself, gee, the guy's on parole. You think he may want to just lay low for about a year or two, perhaps not threaten the neighbor with the spoon. Maybe not beat the uh, maybe not beat the uh, mailbox with aluminum bat at four in the morning, even though uh, one of the neighbors already came out and threatened to call the cops. These are stupid people that need chaos. They don't know anything but chaos, and uh, they actually like the feeling of being uh, confined and restrained. People approach relationships this way. These are the people that are in a relationship when they begin a relationship with you. Yeah. And then, oh, what an amazing um, uh, coincidence that uh, a week after uh, she leaves Jake, she's hooked up with another guy. And uh, she needs herself a nine-month-old. By the way, she's now on my hit list. I hope I can get my uh, squad away from Matt's place uh, long enough to uh, swing by and take care of her. These are the people that want kids because it's like an extension of them somehow. They might as well get a, uh, uh, forget about a boob job, just get like a kid job. What she ought to do, you ought to like sew prosthetic kids to uh, these people's backs, like some sort of, uh, you know, uh, papoose carrier or something, yeah. so they could just uh, quench that need. But, uh, Jake, she needs chaos. You may need some chaos, too, because uh, you were dumb enough to get hooked up with her, but uh, understand it's going to be nothing but hurt. Uh, focus on the kid. Focus on yourself. Take some time off. And uh, she, you may be in pain, but she's doing you a favor. All right. We've got to go to break. I'm tired. Stop it. Loveline will be right back. Hey, we got a regular kennel going on here. We got my dog and uh, Jerry's dog going at it. Dr. Marcel's here tonight. Dr. Marcel is uh, filling in quite nicely for uh, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew's on a skiing vacation and uh, should Playing be back uh, shortly. Yeah. Now, what's the deal? Are you going to be in here again this week? I think tomorrow night. Oh, good. I like Marcel. He's a, he's a regular guy. Michelle. Hi. Hey, you're 21. I'm 21, and I just want to say I love your show. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for listening. I have a question for the doctor. Um, I have an abnormally high amount of hair all over my body. It's long, coarse, and thick, and it's really gross. And um, I have so much, especially like on my stomach and bikini line and inner thighs, that I think electrolysis would be really painful. But I've heard of laser treatment, and I was wondering if it really was permanent because I know it's relatively new. Right. And how long it lasts or how long, how many sessions you have to do. Laser hair removal is, uh, is a big growth field right now. All of a sudden, if you look in the yellow pages or in the, in the newspapers, you'll see it advertised a lot. There's a couple of different lasers that are being used for it. Up until now, nothing is permanent when it comes to laser hair removal <coughs> because they're still trying to fine-tune the type of laser and the wavelength of the the light that they use to kill the follicles. How long is it good for, though? Uh, they, the claims are up to three to six months, but a lot of that is, is media. You're saying? Yeah. And, and it, electrolysis is permanent? Electrolysis is permanent, but it you, it's typically it takes a long time because you can only do a relatively small area at a sitting uh -huh. and usually have to come back several sessions. And it's expensive? It adds up with time. I think... Uh, 
right now there's a newer laser that's about to come out and uh, it promises to at least uh, last longer and be easier to do than electro well it won't be permanent but it'll last longer than waxing or than or chemicals you just have to are you uh, Caucasian or do um, you have dark skin I'm dark skinned and yeah. I've called some plastic surgeons right. and they had said that if I do six sessions it would be permanent but I have to come in for six sessions. With the, with the laser or the electrolysis? With the laser. I'll tell you right now, I am not aware of any laser company that will put that in writing for you, saying that it's permanent, because okay. it's still relatively new. And be very careful because you are dark-skinned. Some of the lasers can cause some pigment problems. Hey, you know, I want to have this, uh, too. <laughs> I'm serious. I get this uh, neck rash down, uh, down here at the bottom. You see down here at the bottom of my neck. And I'm thinking right. to myself, hey, I don't need this hair. I mean, oh, e even if I grow a beard, I wouldn't need the hair way down here, down down near my Adam's apple, right? Absolutely. And if I get a neck rash there because it grows a weird direction and I shave it off in a weird direction, then all i got to do is get this stuff permanently removed and I'll never get a neck rash. Is that right? Yeah. Now, there's a lot of Oh, man, I'm going to get hair money. removed. I'm going to get my uh, deviated septum uh, taken care of. Dr. Yeah. Marcel's going to remove a uh, foreign object from my ass after the show. going to be a new man. Oh, i got a lot of plans. I'm going to lose about 20 pounds when I'm done with this show. And um, that was my other question. If they had research right now showing if there were any side effects from the lasers. Right. Well, if you have dark skin, because uh, one of the ways the lasers are working on your hair follicles is that your hair follicles have a lot of pigment in them, and so the laser interacts with the pigment. Unfortunately, since you have dark skin, the laser could also interact with your skin and cause some problems with your skin color. Do they, um, so is the laser able to do big patches at a time? One of the newer ones is. Ooh. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a, a rapid fire laser. You can, you can do a whole back in 15, 20 minutes. Something you could do like Ed Asner's back in 15 right. minutes? Right. Oh, duly. There's hope. <laughs> That's what I'm going to get duly for uh, for Hanukkah. But uh, <laughs> lasers are a lot like computers. They take my ass. It take them at least a day and a half to do my ass. The, the technology for lasers is always changing, so you have to really stay on to on top oh, of what is coming. What out. a uh, uh, my hats off to you uh, and your colleagues, uh, Doctor Marcel. I mean, uh, think of this world we're going to live in one day. Collagen everywhere, uh, hairless uh, breasts uh, that actually rise up uh, high, like uh, zeppelins uh, higher than the, the woman's chin oh think what can be done uh, uh, it's amazing new world order yeah all right uh i'm just gonna punch a call then Devin. hello hey you're 30 what's going on there hey oh, um i'm gonna oh, hold for 116 minutes yeah wow that's yeah, pathetic my ears are, are starting to wow you're 30 years old i better talk what fast. kind of life must you have what was that now go ahead um, okay, I, uh, oh, I wanted to comment on the woman who, uh, did she fax you something and said that Dr. Drew was so good looking and she was so, uh, she was so disappointed and yeah. you know, how you looked at she's a big loser. She's really appalled by my appearance. She's a loser. Yeah, I don't, you know, listen, I'm, uh, I'm no, uh, um, Mark Hamill. I don't know. Who's a good-looking guy? <laughs> I'm no Julio Iglesias, uh, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. Oh, no, you yeah, look I'm no Brad Pitt. Yeah, Tom Cruise. There you go. Yeah, I'm none of those guys. Oh, uh, screw those guys. I'm taller than they are. Oh, least. no, you look good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to say that um, I was concerned that uh, my own mother, <clears throat> who is very abusive, mostly emotionally, very disparaging and very detached, kind of a hippie, in the 70s? Yeah, that's what my mom is. Yeah, well, we were, um, we were also on welfare for a long time. Hey. Years, wait a minute, this years. baby, hey, Lauren? What? Nada. I thought you were my sister for a minute. Oh. <laughs> no, well. That's all right. Anyway, she is, uh, becoming a therapist. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, went back to grad school and, uh. Right, right. Yeah, it's a little, uh, it's a little disconcerting. Oh, no, it's not. Everyone, everyone in my family's gotten into therapy. The more screwed up you are, the more uh, chance you have to help other people that are screwed up. It's yeah. like um, uh, you're you're a better mechanic because you drove a pile of crap, and you worked on it every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, I think if you've come to terms with it. Yeah, I know. You you know what? I've had this argument with my dad, who's a uh, therapist, many a time, saying, 
uh, I know a few. I have a friend whose parents are therapists. Um, I know a few people are therapists. Uh, my um, family friends, uh, that sort of thing. Usually uh, the most uh, unstable, effed up people I've ever met in my life. Yeah. And I say to my dad, now my dad's a therapist, but my dad is, is uh, you know, goes to bed at 9 at night, gets up at 6, uh, meditates, uh, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, little peyote, an occasional hooker. But other than that, I mean, real straight area. I mean, this guy doesn't watch the Super Bowl because he's got to meditate. He doesn't play golf. He doesn't do any of this crap. He's not like Dr. Marcel over here. He's got a new chick, and he's trying to convert every car into a convertible. He'd like to t convert a uh, hearse into a convertible if it, if it was up to him. But um, I say, Dad, these people are, are effed up. Why should I pay someone 100 bucks an hour to talk to someone who's more effed up uh, than I am? And he basically said that, um, listen, um, that's the way they conduct their lives. It doesn't mean they uh, aren't able to... Um, it doesn't mean they're negligent. It doesn't mean they don't know their business. And it doesn't mean they can't help you in whatever you're trying to do with. Uh, they just can't do it themselves. It's, I don't know. It's like a guy who smokes getting you to quit smoking. I guess if you were a doctor and you knew how to get someone to quit smoking, you could still smoke and do it. I wouldn't actually smoke while I was doing it, but I think it could be done. Yeah. Is that a decent analogy? Absolutely. Oh, it is? It's more likely very agreeable. Not like that Drew. <laughs> he drags his feet all the time. Sarah. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> I, I took you because I felt sorry for you. Oh, well, thank you. You're 14. You've been on hold for 115 minutes. Yep. I go through a lot to talk to you. What's going on? Um, I want you to fart on my head. Oh, oh, you do? Yes. I'm, I don't know if I'm too young, though, but I want to be a doctor because I love you and Dr. Drew, and I want to be as smart as you guys, and yeah. I get okay grades and stuff, but... So I want you to fart on my head. Can we make that happen? I can symbolically fart on your head from my bedroom tonight, but physically, uh, I don't think I can. You are underage, and I'm looking for someone who's 18 and above. Plus, you don't seem to have the problems that I'm looking for. I'm looking to pay someone $500 a female for me to fart on her head. It's a long story, but I'll explain when we come back. Loveline's phone number is 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. We'll be right back. Hey, it's the How to Eat Meat guy. Doesn't that sound like that's from that Carl's Jr. commercial? <laughs> no. All right, uh, Dr. Marcel, thank you very much for filling in for uh, Dr. Drew, who's uh, filling in his wife right now. Michael uh, McKeon will be in here. Oh, he's done. I get a sense. You know, when you work with a guy long enough, you know when he orgasms. Uh, just like when women work together, you know, their periods sort of sync up. Right. When I'm, guys I'm work together. When, oh, that's true. All right, uh, Michael McKeon tomorrow night. He's a fabulously talented, funny man, and uh, I look forward to meeting him. Uh, Marcel, you'll be in here tomorrow night? You bet. All right, I want to thank uh, Fabulous Lisa, the lovely Sherry, the beautiful Ann Angular, producer Ann, and of course, the one-nut wonder. And